Hello and welcome everyone to Crow Marmot Commentary. In the room, myself of course, Ken Navarro, and right next to me, Michael Lippy Lipman. Hi everybody, this is Lippy. And uh, also in the studio is Jim Lively. Hello. Sound engineer. So, Crow Marmot, again, harking back to the second DVD, I guess, um, our original idea was to, we really wanted to get guest directors to come in and, and have fun with the characters and stuff like that and just create their own kind of cartoon off of our characters. So with that in mind, we got in touch with Lippy on this third DVD. Lippy, who is also, by the way, for you HTF aficionados, is the voice of Nutty. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just as crazy. We got in touch with Lippy. Well, Ken is do... being very gracious here. Actually, I beg Ken and Rody. <laughs> To let me work on this thing, they were looking at some black and white reference material, and they knew that I was a real fan of this old black and white uh, birth of sound stuff. And uh, so he called me up and said, hey, Lip, do you have anything we can look at? So I slipped this note in to the DVDs, yes. right? You remember yes. that? And I said, Ken, please, you know, oh, if there's any chance at all, uh, remember your friends. So um, No, Rody and I always knew that Lippy was the man for this job, so, um, <laughs> but... That that was the time when we were trying to get an idea if this was even possible, you know, and all this stuff. So, of co- and obviously it was, you know, we produced it and stuff like that. And uh, we'll be going through some of kind of the, the, the uh, creation, the birthing of um, of the, this whole the process. The birth pang. Exactly. Yeah. Normally in the show, he's just frozen in a block of ice. So in this one, we obviously wanted him to be animated and moving around and stuff like that. And again, the other thing we wanted to try is make it really look old timey and get that really kind of rubber hosey, very um, steamboat willy kind of look. So um, what you're seeing right now is one of the concept sketches that Rody drew up just to get that kind of feel. Uh, you'll notice his limbs are a little longer than, you know, regular happy tree friend characters. And he's just slightly, just slightly a little different. And we wanted to see how far we can take that experiment, I guess. Yeah, when I took a look at this, when I talked to you and Rody originally, um, I, I said to Rody, "What do you, show me whatever you've got?" And when he pulled these out, I could see that he was really thinking mostly, or both you guys, was the rubber hose stuff, and everything else had not been really thought through. It was just like we know it kind of, you know, it should look old and all that uh, kind of Fleischer esque stuff. So this was actually it was good that you guys hadn't gone too far down a road because uh, then I felt a lot freer to just. Uh, start to go through, you know, part of the fun for me was all the homework and I could start to look through old books and uh, just, you know, rip, basically rip everybody off of... Uh, yes, that's what we're all about characters. here at Happy True Friends is ripping other people off. Yeah, so I just go to the library. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, me paying homages yeah, to it. Oh, there's <laughs> lots of those in this. <laughs> we toyed around with giving him gloves and stuff like that, which I think we ended up giving him gloves, but it was really, you know, those funny Mickey Mouse gloves that everybody had back in those days. Well, you know, what I found out when I started doing the research was that the bo- the reason, of course, they had those gloves was because uh, they were doing the artwork on paper before cells. So they were actually doing black. They were filling with black ink these bodies, and they needed some gloves so that the hands would read in front of the bodies. And I started finding that in the same way when I started doing backgrounds and realizing um, kind of one of the early things I realized was... Uh, the character should be the blackest thing in the frame, and he'll pop. And so when in a little while we'll talk about the background design, but that's one of the first things I said to Jenny Hansen was, okay, the background should really fade out into just middle shades of gray, and the darkest thing in the frame will be Crow Marmot's body. And um, then, of course, with those white gloves, boom, they pop right in front. Again, um, when we were trying to get across, you know, the vision of what we wanted to Lippy here, we just wanted, this was kind of like a, a rough kind of background treatment of what we thought, you know, the, the landscape might look like. Um, we really, Rody and I really love these kind of hanging rocks, these kind of Warner Brothers. you know, I'm looking at this now and thinking I should have looked at this closer because to tell you the truth, I love those hanging rocks that are just balancing precariously on the top of the mesas. Yeah. That would have been cool. So those, these were just fun backgrounds, yeah. you know, that we thought. We'll do that on the sequel. Yes, yeah. sure. More precariously balanced rocks. It's good times. Yeah, this was it. This was uh, basically the four drawings that I got from you guys after uh, we had a lunch discussion eating some, um, I think, very spicy uh, meat sauce. Yeah, right? we don't give Lippy a lot. <laughs> they gave <laughs> me a lot of meat that's sauce. That's pretty much though. it. It's like, here's the four drawings, Lip. See you later. Bye. Now remember those rocks. Okay, this guy's looking pretty shady. Yeah, well, this is my first sketch. So I have this crow marmot. Yeah, don't ask. You know, it was one of those days. 
And I had it tacked to my drawing board, and then I just started thinking, okay, how, what, what do I need? So the first thing I did was I tried to stretch him to even facilitate uh, more of the rubber hose stuff. I like his, his weird nappy shaggy hair. <laughs> yeah, you know, I gave him this weird uh, gorilla kind of uh, animal. I, st- I was trying to make him animal style, you know, put a, little, put a little mustard and some onions into him. All right, so this is, um, I guess we're getting closer here. It's coming back more towards um, Crow Marmot. But uh, that one on the right has a tail. Right, right. I was playing like, hmm. Well, you know, this was when I, uh, again, you know, doing that homework thing, which is a lot of fun. I actually went on, uh, I went online and uh, went to like marmot.com and looked up pictures of marmots, <laughs> right? I did. Isn't that, isn't that an illegal no. site? Well, it is now, kids, because uh, <laughs> I just bought the domain. So now it's a, it's a porn site. Uh, but, um, yeah, so I found that they are related to squirrels. And so I started thinking, oh, you know, they have fluffy tails. And, well, I didn't even know they were related see, to squirrels. See, look at the things you learn. Exactly. See, here kids were learning and sharing. Well, I thought, well, you know, maybe since he's, uh, he's in, his, case, in his, um, his precursor days and the formation of the character, maybe he should have had a tail back then. So I was messing with that. I started to streamline his face. On the left, I was trying to work out the black tones. Uh, I knew he needed to be blacker so that he would pop on that, uh, over that background. And I started to get a little alarmed that everything I was doing was white, 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 white. And um, Because, of course, there's no color in Chrome Marmot's world. Yeah. It's He's mono, gray, monochrome Marmot. Not a gray yeah. area. Pretty close. This is almost, almost what he turned out to be with, you know, a couple of small changes and stuff like that. At this point, I was looking at this still thinking, you know, this character isn't cute enough. There's a problem here. I didn't, I didn't like the way the head was working with the body. You know, it's just kind of unpleasing shapes. And mostly because the proportions were very similar. The head was about the same size as the body. And um, that's kind of character design 101. you got to mix up those proportions. So uh, I hadn't done that yet. Now, really mixing up proportions. Yeah, right. Well, then I started. <laughs> so, it's always extremes with Lippy. It's one way or the other. Well, I started. No actually, actually, that's right. I thought, well, let's just really push it then. So this little guy running on the left was <laughs> let's like make a guy. huge head, and and actually he became incredibly <laughs> like gigantism or something. Yeah, well, he became a lot cuter to me. <laughs> Um, he did. Yeah, right? And I yeah. thought, like, oh, this is going to work. Now, that's a little too much. I really can't animate him because his body is so small. Uh, but, um, again, I thought he was much more interesting than the guy on the right. This may have been the last drawing I did where he had that caveman full-on Tarzan suit thing uh, because I started to realize uh, I need more black there and I might just have to give him a breech cloth. Yay! Coincidentally, the breech cloth! <laughs> uh, let's see. There's some fun stuff here. Down in the bottom of the picture, you'll see a, a, like a dis disembodied leg foot. and foot. Thank you. Um, that uh, was a total ripoff of, uh, of a classic cartoon from a major studio that we won't name. <laughs> and I just started seeing... Uh, it's an homage. <laughs> yeah. I started seeing they, they, they would just take these, the simpler, simpler the better. And I started to realize, hey, man, I got to simplify this guy. So I'm starting to get closer on the proportions on the right. And um, I think the next big thing that happened was, yeah, I took his feet down. And we may have even... At one point... I, I got rid of his, his cub-like ears. So this was kind of a breakthrough because um, I realized that um, if I put these old 30s... Floppy ears? Yeah, yeah, like these old ears where he actually had that kind of old-style dog kind of, you know, uh, uh, unspecific <laughs> animal species thing, it would start to read better. And so now the feet are getting smaller, the ears are coming on, and pretty much the last thing I needed to do after this was I changed his nose where... I don't even know if I have any drawings of that. That happened, like, literally at the last minute. I think I was already in Flash and had electronified it um, when I realized... Electronified. Must put big jelly bean nose. What the hell is going on here? Okay, so look at his proportions here. Uh, He's in this swing, and these are pretty much the proportions he ended up being. (laughs) Who's this guy sleeping down here, Lip? Is that uh, you? Was that you taking a nap? Well, you know, when you're sketching, you got to go oh, somewhere. So you do that. That's so random with the big yeah, feet. Yeah, you, you know, you got to go somewhere and then you come back. <laughs> I don't know what's to, going on down here. It's he's scary. like, he's going to kick him in the teeth or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Are you sure this is for this guy? <laughs> this is for DVD only. What you're going, what you're looking at is um, a takeoff on a snail character. And when you look at the um, animatic that I did for. The right after this section, you'll, we'll, we'll we'll run the animatic, and you'll see there's actually a scene that we had cut with this with this kind of snail character. Yeah, so I was just getting loose and drawing this snail, and I started working out these hands. 
And this, this probably was a day that I was really working on getting these gloves right. And you'll see this hand in the upper right actually is pretty darn close to a hand that I used when Crow, when there's a close-up of his stomach roaring like a lion. Okay, you heard it here first. Look for that hand because, uh, and then as an extra bonus point, watch how many times I used that hand because it turned out so well. I really liked it <laughs> that I used it Cheap. ad infinitum. Cheap. <laughs>